Hey guys, welcome to your December 2020 readings. I'm super excited to get into these readings for you guys. And I just wanted to really quickly say that I'm changing things up a little bit for December. Depending on how this goes, this may be something that I do in 2021 as well. Um, but essentially, I just felt like I needed to try something different, switch up the categories, and also just you know, in full transparency, the 12 zodiac sign readings for YouTube are a lot of work every single month. And I'm just feeling like I need to give myself a little bit more of a breather to be able to keep up with my private client readings, as well as all the other things that I do in my business. So I thought it would be fun to experiment and try grouping these readings a little bit differently. Um, you guys know, if you're familiar with my channel, that I read primarily for artists, creators, entrepreneurs, and anyone who's working on their personal growth as well. So for my readings for now, what I've decided is to switch things up into categories of artists, entrepreneurs, startups, and investors. So regardless of your zodiac sign, if you fall into any one of these categories or maybe multiple of those categories, I encourage you to go ahead and listen to the video for that category. Like let's say for example, if you're an artist, but you're also starting a new company this month or in 2021, then you could listen to the artist reading and the startup reading. Um, and vice versa, if you're an entrepreneur, but you also like to do investments, um, you could listen to both of those. Just group them however it makes sense to you. I want to try this because I feel like it makes sense on a broader level, given that the even the videos that I get the most views on still represent a very, very small slice of the global population. So I've been meditating on this and what I've been kind of given as far as like a spiritual answer is that I can actually tune in and give general readings in different categories than just the zodiac signs because you guys represent, you know, a very close-knit group. Those of you who've been on my channel for a while, or even if you're new here, um, the vast majority of people are not going to see these readings. So every reading that I do, I set the intention that I'm getting the clearest and most accurate information possible for the people who are going to see this video. So with that intention and with this continued focus on entrepreneurship and makers and creators, let's move forward and try something new together. Hopefully it's not too different or weird for you guys and uh, just bear with me and let's see how this goes. Okay, artists, here is your reading for the month of December. This is a month that is taking us to the end of 2020, thank God, right? Um, and into 2021. So I wanted to get some insight for the artists out there um, who are maybe tying things up or thinking about new goals um, and thinking about what you're going to be doing moving forward with your creativity, whether you are um, a mixed media artist, a writer, a screenplay um, creator, somebody who does painting or does anything creative whatsoever. So let's take a look at the messages that want to come through today for the artists. And I'm also going to pull a 
Bob Ross card. And I'm going to get you a surrender card. So let's take a look at your path and the obstacle cards. Your path is the tiger, <laughs> and the obstacle or the influence is the unicorn. Wow. So the first thing that's coming through for me when I look at these is the word courage. Um, I feel like it takes courage to be <laughs> both a tiger <laughs> and a unicorn. <laughs> um, and if you're a unicorn person, you know what I mean. I feel like with these cards, as I'm looking at them, um, there's some kind of an idea that you have if you're a creator, um, and I feel like it makes sense to you on a logical level, but there's a large fear within you that it's too different to pursue, or, you know, sometimes with the unicorn as an obstacle, it's like we're afraid of, of being so out there, or being perceived as quite out there kind of kooky or, or you know, off-putting maybe even to some. But the tiger is your path, so it's almost like you have to trust, and as well with the moon on the tiger's forehead, it's like you have to be brave enough to trust your instincts and to trust your intuition that this maybe kind of weird thing that you're thinking about doing um, is worth doing <laughs> still, even if it does give you some fears and even if it does seem really out there. I think that if, as long as it makes logical sense, for you, um, then I feel like that's going to be something to pursue. But it, it has to, you know, it's it's fine to be weird. It's fine to be different. It's wonderful to be different as long as you are doing it in a way that's still kind of grounded in the sense that whatever you're doing is not just weird to, like, just for the sake of being weird, but it's it's weird because it's innovative or it's weird because it's liberating in some way from the old kind of sticky ways that we get, you know, as human beings, we get stuck in, for example, telling the same kind of stories, right? All stories have unifying qualities to them, right? The hero's journey. There are certain universal truths of challenges that we go through and how they change us, but there's a lot of different options and a lot of like a multitude maybe even just you know infinite ways that a story could be unique and as long as it still has that core sort of kernel of truth that speaks to a human journey of expansion or a path that leads to difficulty but also growth then it can be whatever it needs to be. It doesn't have to follow a specific genre or it can straddle five different genres. You know, that's kind of like the metaphor that's coming through for you artists out there. So let's take a look at your tarot cards and we'll get some more information. Yeah, so you've got the King of Wands, Six of Swords, Knight of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, Temperance underneath the King of Wands, the Two of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Three of Pentacles. Interesting, because I'm also kind of seeing these cards as, I normally read week by week, but I'm kind of seeing your reading for the artists as kind of what's going on above the surface and what's going on beneath the surface, right? Um, <clears throat> what's going on above the surface is what is conscious, what's visible, what other people might notice um, and corroborate with you. What's going on under the surface is like what's happening behind the scenes, what's really going on here, right? And that's kind of the way that I'm actually reading your cards for this month. The King of Wands is above temperance. So it's almost like the king of wands is you being dynamic, being creative, not being afraid to try something different, not being afraid to 
break some rules. If it, Again, if it makes sense to do so, the King of Wands is the king in tarot that will the most readily break rules and rebel. That is just the truth of this card. He is a king just as much as the other kings, but he represents a powerful energy of mastery that appreciates the quality of flexibility and dynamism, right? The ability to adapt. This is a very adaptogenic king. Um, so coming up to represent your energy, this is about you almost kind of throughout the month preparing yourself to make some kind of adaptation with your work. And you could be departing with the Six of Swords. You could be departing from a familiar way that you have worked in the past or taking an idea, which is the King of Wands, and running with it, right? But what's going on under the surface is actually that you're having to be really patient and calm with yourself with the, the Two of Wands as well. It's like you know the changes that are happening underneath the surface are about your empowerment and you know that they're about helping you to accomplish your goals, right? But on the surface, what it looks like is you are being a risk taker. <laughs> and I think other people will notice like, wow, you're really departing from what you normally do with the king, you know, but with the six of wands or six of swords, I'm sorry, above the two of wands, it's like what you actually are doing, like it looks like you're doing this, right? It looks like you moving away from something, you know, familiar and maybe there's a little bit of sadness to that. But what you really know is going on is under the surface, you are projecting your consciousness into the future and seeing opportunities that most people are not seeing yet. And that's another gift of being an artist is that artists perceive elements in reality that the rest of us don't just go way over our heads, right? That's the point of being an artist is being able to communicate through various different forms of um, expression a, a different view of life, a slightly less um, conventional view of life. And you see that you're setting yourself up for the future. So while your actions in this present moment may not make sense to everyone around you, that's only because they're not looking into the future to the degree that you are, right? They're, they don't have the same vision that you have. So it's okay. I almost see these two, the two is like a portal or a threshold. Like these two, it's like two walls or two columns that you're walking through almost in a, a threshold kind of ritualistic manner like you're crossing over you know a boundary into a new existence but it's still kind of far off so that's why some people around you may not really get it is sort of what I feel by the second week we have the knight of Pentacles and the eight of Pentacles but what's really going on underneath that is the wheel of fortune and the three of Pentacles so again there's this theme of what's going on above the surface feeling different than what's going on like actually behind the scenes and what's really developing. You might feel like you're walking a path that's quite lonely right now. You might feel like you're walking a path that you have to really focus on and you have to really put in the elbow grease. You really have to have trust and faith in yourself and it doesn't necessarily feel like this guy has everybody backing him up because look, the city is behind him, nobody else is near him, and it's the same with this knight. So they're both kind of secure within themselves, or at least they're developing that, and they're both relying on their inner resources as opposed to pulling on things from the outer, you know? Um, this is a time very much for artists that has a lot to do with maybe isolation or at least self, um, like resourcefulness of the self. It's like you're not relying on other people right now. You're really going through internal changes and working on your craft and mastering your craft with less validation perhaps or less training or less influence from the outside. And some of you could be, you know, taking classes and things like that but it still feels like you're quite alone somehow in this journey. But what's really going on under the surface is like you're paving the way to your destiny, right? 
with the Wheel of Fortune and the Three of Pentacles. It's like what's really going on here, what feels like, man, this is really hard work. I don't know, nobody's paying attention right now or it's moving kind of slow or I just don't know if anybody will really appreciate what I'm doing. Um, or, you know, am I, it's like the, the, the example that keeps coming to my mind is somebody writing like a really long novel and nobody's laid eyes on it yet. And they're six months into it and they're like hacking away and thinking, is this all a waste of time? You know, like, is this, cause you don't have any, um, validation for it yet. Nobody's touched it. Nobody's looked at it. Nobody's telling you, yeah, great job. You know, nobody can honestly say that because they have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> um, but what you're really developing is your destiny, which is the wheel of fortune. What you're really developing is a target that you are going to hit and it's going to open doors for you, social doors with the three of pentacles. You're going to have, there are going to be people that come, you know, there are going to be people that want to work with you. There are going to be people that resonate with whatever it is that you're doing and you're really setting yourself up for that. You're paving the way. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Now, as far as looking at this week by week, the first week is um, kind of more about risk taking and not being afraid to take initiatives. Uh, with the King of Wands and the Six of Swords. So don't be afraid to tie something off. If it's a loose end, don't be afraid to set something aside or take a risk or maybe even travel for some of you. The second week, you've got the Knight of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles, which is, you know, it, it's definitely a work week, I would say. There's going to be a lot going on. You might have a lot going on at home, but then at the same time, you're also doing a lot for work. So just try and plan intelligently for that second week of December because you're really going to need to have some good time management skills. But you can get a lot done. Temperance and the Two of Wands in the third week of December really to me speaks about um, having some time set aside for planning. So I want to say that that third week of December, you want to try and have less on your schedule because it would be a really good time for you to start visualizing your future. And I feel like for some reason, some of you are going to get some information that's going to help you make decisions. For some reason, I want to say that. I feel like the third week of December, it's like if you've been needing to make some big decisions and you feel like you didn't have the information yet, I feel like it's coming around the third or fourth week of December. So that's a really good time for kind of projecting your mindset into the future, maybe getting a day planner set up and that kind of thing. The Wheel of Fortune and the Three of Pentacles are coming up in the um, last week of the month, which is also the last week of 2020, which shows me that you're closing out the year on a note of hopefulness and on a note of productivity and feeling like you can um, move into the future with a sense of confidence in yourself to be able to interact in a productive way um, within your career specifically because it's the three of pentacles. So it's like as you end the year, you're feeling more fortunate because of relationships that you're building. You're feeling lucky with the um, wheel of fortune. And there's just this great sense of potential here. There's this great sense of what's possible for you with your art or with your creations and whatever your commerce is. So let's take a look at your um, oracle as well. <laughs> So the surrender card that you got is surrender your desire to control people. It says being over controlling can sabotage relationships. To more effectively achieve your goals, back off, regroup, and give the situation some breathing room. <laughs> Interesting. Um, you know, as I'm tuning into this, I don't necessarily know that it feels like you're trying to control other people, but I feel like for those of you for whom this reading is resonating, it's more like surrender your your desire to control like situations, for example, because you've got the six of swords, which is a card of letting go, right? And that's in the first week. So this could be coming up soon for some of you. It's like if you have been staying in a mode of expressing yourself that isn't working for you um, or it's not working for you anymore, right? Maybe it did at one point. Um, I feel like the Six of Swords is really saying, 
sometimes letting go of your need to persist in the same pattern is really about letting go of control, right? Because if you change something in how you express yourself or in the kind of art that you do or, you know, whatever, change the name of your business, for example, or your website, um, you're kind of submitting in a way, like there's an energy of submitting to this, um, like a little death, you know? It's like a little death, you're turning the page into a new chapter and it, it takes courage to let go of the illusion that you can control your life because even when you are even when you are kind of persisting in the same way of doing things that may or may not really be working for you anymore um the the feeling of security that you get from doing that same thing even though it's not really your heart anymore the feeling of security that you get from that is partly an illusion because you actually don't have control. Um, we don't have control over anything, you know, and I feel like this kind of reminds me of something that um, I'll probably like butcher the story, but that Jim Carrey said about his dad. Um, one thing that gave Jim Carrey like the confidence and the courage to really believe in himself and the willingness to kind of risk putting all of his time and energy into becoming a comedic actor was the fact that his dad was also really funny and um, also very entertaining and wanted to be an actor or wanted to be involved in comedy but instead chose a safer path um, becoming a CPA and he actually failed at being a CPA. He lost his business um, at a point during uh, Jim Carrey's childhood and so Jim Carrey saw that you could fail at something that you don't love <laughs> so why not just try and do something that you do love because if you can fail either way like nothing is a guarantee so you might as well go for something that you love um, and that's kind of like what I'm getting from this is, is sort of surrender your need to control your reality um, and instead, you know, submit to like the passion and excitement that you feel and let that be the motivator rather than the feeling of, oh, I need to hang on to something because it's my security blanket. That's kind of the feeling that I get. Wow. And your destiny card is enlightenment. This is beautiful. Yeah, you're going places. You guys are going places. Your Bob Ross card says, let's make some nice little clouds that just float around and have fun all day. <laughs> this is funny because um, it's just like what I was just saying about letting yourself be led by joy and by excitement rather than a like more contracting feeling of like, oh, this has to, you know, I have to maintain the status quo or, you know, this will make me feel less certain in my life. Um, you always want to balance that with practicality, right? You don't want to just kind of jump uh, off a bridge, <laughs> you know? You, uh, you don't want to burn bridges or just kind of make foolish choices. But at the same time, if there is something that you really feel you want to pursue and you see a path to do that, you know, I feel like the end of 2020 is a really great time for all of us to sort of tie up loose ends, release, you know, karmic attachments and wounding from the past and really move forward into um, hopefully what is a really bright and powerful new landscape. Okay, artists, thank you so much for being here for this reading. I hope something in here was useful to you. If you're a longtime subscriber, um, please let me know in the comments what you think of this format. I know it is very different, but I just felt like it would be more conducive at least to try this out for me uh, so that I can manage my time a little bit more easily. Um, also, I want to say that I do still have some spaces left for 2021 readings that will be able to be delivered just before the end of the year. So um, depending on when you hear this, they may all be taken up, but I will put the link to my personal best year ever 12 month reading offering um, that's on my website. Okay, guys, hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time.